All right, guys. Hey, so I have these uh, these really nice chili pepper flavors going on, earthy, somewhat fruity, uh, some salty garlic notes hanging in there, and a really full mouth burn, glowing tongue, glowing lips, glowing inner cheeks, glowing roof of the mouth, back of the throat, glowing everywhere. So, hey, guys, uh, Old Testament. I said we're going to look at that sacrificial system today, okay, uh, ancient Israelites under Mosaic law, okay, uh, now, uh, in those days, all right, uh, sin was covered, okay, not completely forgiven, that would come later, hey, when we get to the New Testament, we're not going to rush things, all right, so, uh, sin was covered by the sacrifice of of animals. Okay, now, uh, so this whole system of blood shedding needs a little explanation here. All right, so uh, first of all, Mosaic law based on atonement. Okay, atonement meant life for a life. All right, now understand, okay, God being holy, okay, uh, he is intolerant of sin. Sin is against his nature. He does not sin. Doesn't have anything to do with sin. Perfect and holy. Okay. So when we, as his creations, sin, okay, our life at that point becomes forfeit. Okay. Now that really hasn't changed to this day. Okay. We did, Because of our sins, we are fully deserving of death okay so first of all when you go and you read the Bible you have to understand that and you have to take that into account and uh, yeah since God is holy when we are sinners uh, our sins are intolerable to him and we are for our lives at that point become forfeit okay but as God loves his creation and uh, and uh, wishes to reconcile us with him. Okay, and that again, I'm jumping forward to the New Testament. But but back in those days, uh, we, they took sinless animals. Okay, I say sinless because animals are not moral creatures. Okay, uh, when a cat kills a bird, you don't say to the cat, "Thou shalt not kill," or that cat is a sinner. That is not so. That is by nature the animal is what it is, and it is doesn't it is incapable of making moral choices. Okay, so so in essence, an animal is sinless. Okay, it is innocent. Okay, and it is sacrificed instead of the guilty party, us who are sinners and are moral creatures. Okay, so that's the innocent animal takes the place of the guilty sinner so that the guilty sinner does not forfeit his life, okay? And I don't need any animal activists out there enraged at what I'm saying here because the, the God lays down in the New Testament and Jesus confirms this. And I mean, it, 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 he, God lays it down in the Old Testament. Jesus confirms it in the New Testament that we humans who are made in God's image are more important than animals. Yes, another thing you have to understand when you go about reading the Bible. Okay, so now uh, we have a situation where we have sins are covered, okay, but man continues to sin. So sacrifice after sacrifice has to be made in order to atone. All right, so again, life for a life, blood must be shed for the forgiveness of sins. Okay, so uh, we're going to see that this problem of not that our sinning goes away, but the continual need to cover sins is going to change when we get to the New Testament. And I'm going to go through that at a later show. But before we even do that, uh, we're going to talk, we're going to again talk about this very subject. Uh, on the next show. However, I'm going to bring it into context of what has been going on in my recent conversations because, hey, uh, when you're out in the field, you're kind of getting a new insight in what people are actually thinking. And it's different from just talking here 
amongst myself talking to you about some this or this, uh, but this is actual conversations I'm having with people and I'm able to bring uh, outside stuff here to the show, then bring it to you through the show. How does that sound? I, I don't know if I got that quite right, but anyway, uh, we're going to uh, talk about how this is relating to uh, some of the conversations I've been having lately, and we'll try to make that clear and bring it into the present day here. So, uh, all right, guys. Hey, that's going to be it for today. I'm going to be back with Uncle Joe's Trinidad Habanero Sauce. So, hey, don't go anywhere. Hi, right, welcome back to the pit. Here again with Uncle Joe's Trinidad Scorpion Habanero Sauce. Take one more look at that. Uh, Meadowview Farms, guys. Uh, this is just one of the lineup of uh, some really interesting sounding sauces that they have. Uh, they grow a really, really interesting variety of peppers, so it stands a reason that their sauces will be interesting as well. Uh, the, uh, despite the uh, the pepper, I mean the the, uh, the pepper selection here, we have the Trinidad and the habaneros. Uh, you think right away that that's going to be something really exotic and stuff, but real simple sauce going on here, guys. Uh, again, some basic ingredients. Uh, really hammers home though. Good chili flavors going on. Uh, we have a little bit of garlic, a little bit of salt, a little vinegar tang going on. Everything in good balance. Excuse me, get a little gas buildup in the chest. Uh, sauce has a really decent heat, uh, nothing crazy. Uh, however, uh, that kind of is actually good in this case because it really cements home the flavors of those peppers. So this is kind of interesting in that the, as the heat is really good, but it's not extreme, uh, and the flavors are so much there that you'd think with so much flavor you'd get a whole lot of heat accompanying that. But uh, not the case here. Uh, I don't know, really uh, really well made stuff. I uh, hope to have more of their sauces on board on future episodes. Uh, just have to get down to the farm. I'm sure I'll be down there enough during pepper season picking up some fresh peppers. Hate to eat some of those on the show and also make a whole variety of cool sauces. So hey, these guys in one way are my lifeline to making some really good and interesting sauces, guys. Again, looking forward to that. Hoping to grow my own as well. But hey, guys, uh, until I see you next time, we're going to wrap it with this one. And uh, read your Bible, say your prayers, and I'll catch you then. Bye-bye.